Okay, so the next part of this guy. We have a new lab assignment today. Yeah, lab assignment three. It is extremely, extremely easy. Uh, this is another guy that's worth 1%. This one is a pass fail though. So basically you do it, you get the 1%. You don't do it or you miss half of it, you get the fail on it. You're gonna get a zero, okay? Uh, so the object uh, of uh, this uh, lab assignment is to familiarize students with creating features with draft as well as checking parts for adequate draft angles. I don't have a document uh, on how to do this stuff. It's kind of half written into the lab assignment and then the other half is me telling you and it's being recorded on video. So expectations with this, same as before. Students are expected to complete all their own work uh, by the due date on the FOL Dropbox. It was brought up to me uh, during, at the end of yesterday's class that I screwed up the date on uh, lab assignment number two. I gave you guys an extra week, which was not the intention. Um, so I am not changing the due date of that and it's still gonna be open, so what, if uh, you still need time on that, that's completely fine. It's gonna be whatever the due date is on FOL, but I'm not changing it, okay? Um, with that said, the, the due date for this is gonna be the Tuesday next, like this coming week, okay? So that means that into lab assignment two, which technically was supposed to be due a week ago, with, and this assignment and the project are all gonna be due on the Tuesday, okay? Yeah, um, but that aside, uh, please see the student handbook in regards to expectations regarding academic integrity at the college. Uh, all files submitted, prefixed with your student number. We've been over this, I feel like a thousand times now, but please, I just want to reiterate and to keep doing it. Uh, valid fi the file names only include characters, uh, or characters that are letters, numbers, and underscores. And uh, if you're submitting multiple files, which in this case you will be, there's going to be, yeah, I think there's three part files uh, and some images. Um, but please uh, submit them in a compressed folder, either zip, rar, or 7-zip. Uh, Parts uh, can be drawn in uh, this assignment into are any units, so metric or imperial, millimeters or inch. Uh, for this, it doesn't matter. So, uh, complete everything listed below, upload the files uh, to the assignment Dropbox and FOL, and again, this is a pass-fail assignment. So do it all, you pass, miss one part, you fail, okay? Yeah, it's, it's an extremely simple and straightforward assignment. Uh, I expect everybody to have the full 1% on this. So yesterday we went over the draft feature within an extrude, the, okay? Now, there was only two that actually showed up because uh, the way that we had uh, our extrude going, our extrude was only going in one direction. Our start or our end uh, uh, value was set to zero and then the other one was our actual value of say the 40 millimeters. So we only had two options. We only had from start or from section. The from section was available because uh, we had uh, our curves that were selected, which is our start section of our draft. And then uh, uh, from start limit was uh, because uh, every extrude has a start limit. Beyond that though, what there are other options. So if uh, the start stop limits of the extrude are set to on either side of the defining curve. So if I have my sketch and then uh, I'm telling my extrude to start up here and end down here below my sketch. I have more options that open up in the draft options within the extrude. And I get three more that show up. I have from section asymmetric angle. What? I have from section symmetric angle and then I have from section matched ends. So the explanation of these that NX gives you is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Basically asymmetric is the angles that are on the top are gonna to be different than the angles on the bottom on either side of your section plane, which happens to be your sketch or your input curves. Okay, symmetric, your angles are gonna be the same. And then matched ends, and so it means that no matter where my start and stop limits are, right, the profile at the end of the extrude is gonna be the same size. So it's gonna change whatever, the, like uh, if I change the angle on my top, it's automatically gonna adjust the angle on my bottom to make sure that that bottom profile is the exact same as the top profile, okay? Uh, within each of these, there's also the option of either single or multiple angles. So yesterday, we went over briefly 
you, with uh, using the draft angle within an extrude uh, that you can uh, have a list show up but, and you could technically apply a different draft angle for each face of your extrude, okay? Each of these options have that within it as well. So, uh, task number one, that there is a part called extrude underscore draft. I believe on FOL it has a one at the end of it. Uh, when I was re-uploading it, it asked me if I wanted to re-add the files or overwrite the existing, and I chose uh, re-add, and it put a, a suffix of one at the end of it. So. It is the exact same part though. So please download the extrude underscore draft part from FOL and create an extruded feature from the provided sketch for each of the draft options in NX. So we're basically, you know, all it is is just a simple file with a, with a very simple sketch in it. I want you to do an extrude and basically cover all of the options. So I want you to do an extrude that has a draft that is from start limit, from a section, and then from section asymmetric from section symmetric and uh, from section matched ends. Also want you to throw in a couple of uh, um, uh, options uh, for using uh, multiple draft angles uh, or just a single draft angle. Okay. So the problem with, with using the draft functionality embedded within the extrude feature is uh, with creating a hollow shelled part. So applying a, a shell to an extrude with draft applied already will, will it potentially create an undercut, uh, yeah, undercut condition. Depending on which way you have your draft. To, um, so a way around this is not to use a shell and instead make a, a hollow component using multiple extrude features. This only comes down to if you have your draft on your outside walls going inward. If you do a shell, then uh, your part is uh, the draft on the inside is also going to be going inward. And, uh, so depending on uh, how you have your parting line, if you don't want the part to be opened up, but instead you want your walls to be almost trapezoidal, so both going out, then you have to do uh, your draft uh, with an extrude, or you have to make your hollow component with another extrude instead of uh, doing it with a shell. So that's all that means. Okay, uh, the second task of this is uh, download the uh, part uh, called uh, shell underscore draft from FOL. Examine the body with a draft analysis. So, in an X, so there is this tool called draft analysis. I believe it is under uh, the analysis section, although I could be wrong. Might be somewhere else. Easiest way, if you're not unsure, is just to search for it. Wait for NX to open up. So I'm going, in my case, uh, I'm going to download, where are you? This guy. This is the guy from yesterday with the uh, different uh, draft options. And uh, I want to uh, do a draft analysis on this. So if I go under analysis, and I believe it's under more, or maybe not, I'm gonna have to search for this. Okay, face shape. So under analysis, subgroup face shape, you have a tool called draft analysis. What this guy does uh, is uh, basically it creates a heat map on your model. Right? Just with different colors uh, showing you uh, what is good and what is not good depending on the values that you put in. So how this guy works is you select the body you know, that you want to check. And then uh, you have to specify what's called a draw direction. So by default, your draw direction is always going to be your z-axis. So that's just what NX defaults to. But to basically, you think of your draw direction as uh, in flask injection molding. What way is uh, your mold opening and closing in relationship to the part? To, so if this is my part, to, if my mold is opening and closing this way on the part, my draw direction is this way. Whereas if it was this way, then it's up and down, or like even if my part is facing this way and my mold opens and closes this way, that's my draw direction. It's always in the direction that your mold is opening and closing. Uh, on the sheet metal side of things, your draw direction is the direction that the press is going up and down. So in that case, it's always gonna be Z. I've never seen a press that goes sideways, but who knows, they could have it somewhere. Um, but to, let's say 
yeah, with this part here, my drop direction is going to be my z-axis. So I'm just going to select my z-axis. And then I have the, what shows up as, or, or then I got a couple of options down here. I have a value, what? basically, for what is my minimum draft that I want. Like, uh, what, what's the minimum draft that I'm checking for? Right now, this guy is set to five degrees. And, so, and uh, you can see that and, uh, the way that my model is covered is colored, and, uh, none of my walls uh, are anywhere near to being five degrees of draft because uh, they are not colored green. Basically, how this, uh, how this color gradient works is uh, on the side, you have red, blue, yellow, and green. Basically, in your direction of draft or in your direction of draw, anything that is yellow or green means that it could be successfully removed from a mold. There is zero undercut. Okay. Anything that is blue or red means undercut. Now, the first object that I chose doesn't have any draft whatsoever. The walls are straight up and down zero degrees, true to the world. They still show up as blue. Anything that has zero draft is going to show up as having negative draft. Because in the plastic injection world, if you have zero draft, it's just the same as having negative draft. Good luck getting the part out of your mold. Okay? There's ways around it. There are ways to make perfectly straight, flat, like rectangular boxes out of a plastic injection process. Okay? But to rule of thumb is you always have draft angles because it just makes things easier. It makes the tool less expensive and for to produce, okay? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. So right now with this part, because my straight walls or my vertical walls don't have any draft on it, I'm looking at that thing and I see, oh, well, I can't make this part. It has no draft. I can't mold this. I am going to deselect this body and instead select one that I know has draft on it. So this guy, my side walls are showing up as yellow. And I can change my scale too. So I could change my scale to one degree. Yeah. The color gradient is basically like a, what is the minimum amount of draft that you want. Anything more than that is going to show up as green. Anything below that is going to show up as your yellow. Yeah. So you have to use one point negative one point five or two degrees. Yeah. So what right now uh, I believe that what is this guy set to? Uh, yeah. So I got a draft angle of two and one point five. So two degrees is on the inside. One and a half degrees is on the outside. I do believe. But so if I say set this guy to two degrees, no, uh, it's two point one. Okay. So what? Whatever you set your limit angle to, what? If uh, if your draft angle is dead on, it's going to show up as being green you know, because it meets that requirement. Okay. Yeah, if it's less, then it's going to show up as yellow. So let's say I want to make sure that I have a minimum of three degrees of draft on this part. And to, so I would set my limit angle to three. Yeah, I run it on this part, and I see that, oh, no, my vertical walls, they are not set to three. They do not have a minimum of three degrees of draft. Okay? Yeah, so then I can go into my feature, modify it, and, to, and then rerun my test and see. Yeah, but to, in this case, or say in this case, uh, I want to make sure that I have a minimum of uh, one degree of draft. If I set that, all of my yeah, faces are good. You have to use two and negative one point five, so one yeah. Will work. yeah, yeah. So one's gonna work regardless. Let's uh, Anything above two, or then. Uh, but if I set it to two, if I select the outside of this guy, yeah, and I have it set to two doesn't like it. So this is uh, this is something else that you guys have to be cautious and uh, look at. I only had the inside faces uh, selected of this body yeah, when I was applying the draft analysis, OK? The inside faces are good. Now, because the draft is technically a negative value on the outside, because uh, I am opening outward instead of inward, or I Forget exactly you know, which way to uh, which way to the normal it is, 
but to basically yeah, my vector, right, my draw direction vector has to be flipped because uh, I am dealing with a negative draft angle. Uh, okay? It's technically, yeah, like it, this part will technically come off a post or a cavity yeah, in the Z direction no matter what, and to, but and to me measuring it because uh, my angle is uh, out this way yeah, from my normal, uh, that means that my draw direction has to be flipped in order for me to get a proper reading of the value. Okay? You also have uh, an option of uh, doing multiple limits. So in this case, uh, let's say that there is, uh, let's say that there's a range that I'm allowed to have. But, so instead of uh, just checking for negative draft, I want to check uh, for, okay, I, all of my part draft has to be within two and three degrees of each other. So in this case, I would have two here and I would set three here. Uh, it has to be negative, sorry. Yeah, I can't uh, have it set to both a positive value. It has to be one to a positive and one to a negative. But let's say there is a certain level of undercut or negative draft that is allowed in the part. And, uh, okay, because say, yeah, uh, as soon as the plastic part cools in the mold, the, there's enough shrinkage in that material that it's gonna remove itself anyway, like it's gonna come out cleanly. So let's say, yeah, I am able to have a negative draft limit to, of uh, minus one. Right now, it still, it doesn't show up as being good because I know my outside draft is one and a half degrees, okay? But to, that is a way that you can check, okay? Where the negative draft is more useful is not so much in plastic parts as it is in sheet metal parts. And so because uh, when you bend a piece of steel, uh, you always have something called spring back, okay? Which means like uh, as soon as you form it down, as soon as you bend that metal object, and to, as soon as the form comes off, your steel is gonna kick back again. And, uh, so basically like, uh, what we have to do is apply compensation and overbend. And, uh, so if I wanna put a 90 degree bend in a steel part, I technically have to bend that part past 90 degrees. And so, okay, yeah, and then it's gonna spring back off the post and it's able to be removed. But that is the basics of using draft analysis. So it is literally just select the object that you wanna do the analysis on, <coughs> and then select the vector of your draw direction that you wanna check it against and put in your max and min values that you're checking for. Okay, uh, in the assignment, I believe that uh, I just have you guys, or I'm asking for you guys just to uh, basically take a screenshot of your results and so showing the heat map input, and uh, that was all I was asking for in that. Um, you are gonna have to be using draft analysis in uh, Jason's uh, uh, first lab, or first theory project. I think there's only one theory project in his section. Um, but you are going to have to be using draft analysis, or at least uh, you had to use it last semester. I'm assuming that it's the same this semester. All right. Uh, so that's a tool that and to keep in the back of your pocket and to remember and learn how to use. Oops. Uh, yeah. So take a screenshot of the draft analysis results and submit that image uh, to the Dropbox. Uh, so basically, the part that I'm providing you does not have a proper draft in it, and I am asking you to basically remake the part so it has proper draft on the inside. Okay, uh, the last task in this assignment is to download the advanced draft part from FOL, and the part has no draft applied. What the part looks like is this. It's a weird looking plastic component and, uh, with a couple of different bosses and everything in it. Its parting line is not flat or straight. It is a spline you know, that's drawn on the top, but so it's complete curvature, or it has complete curvature. Right? And basically, using the draft feature, right, I want you to apply two degrees to all interior and exterior vertical faces. Uh, and I want you to use the top B surface, which is this highlighted, this lovely highlighted guy in magenta here. Right, as your stationary face. So in yesterday's example, we you know, selected the bottom face as the stationary face because I wanted my draft to go out. Well, in this case, uh, I want all of my draft to start to, from my, my top face, but it's going to start at varying points along there, right? which means that to my side walls here, right, the thickness of my part is gonna be constant 
at the very top, but but the thickness of my part at the bottom, down in this section on this side here, is going to be greater than the thickness of my part over in this section here because my draft is not traveling the same distance. Okay, because uh, I'm using the top face as stationary, that's where all of my draft is going to be applied from, and it's going to be kicked out from that point. So the further the distance, uh, the lar or the thicker the part's going to be. In this case, this side is going to be thin. This side is going to be thick. Um, okay, and then also in this guy here, I have uh, you guys. I want you to run a uh, calculate wall thickness. Calculate wall thickness uh, is useful for checking a sheet metal and plastic parts to make sure that one, A, that you modeled them correctly, if it's a sheet metal part anyway, that you modeled it correctly, and uh, for a plastic part to, to make sure that you're going to have a good material flow. When it comes to plastic components, and so, or even cast components like die cast or uh, molten metal casting, you know, lost wax uh, or any other of those processes, it's always best uh, if you're model has a constant wall thickness to it and to, so that and to, you're not going from an extremely thick section to an extre extremely thin section in your part. So what we do we have to check that guy is under the analysis uh, tab but under more right we have this tool called check wall thickness and all it is is that you run it, you select the body that you want to check, and then uh, under this guy here, right, there's a couple of different options. Uh, we are only ever going to be using the rolling ball method. And that there's two mathematical methods uh, that this tool uses uh, to run and do its checks, okay? We have ray and rolling ball. What rolling ball does uh, is it basically finds the smallest sphere, or the, sorry, mind you, the largest sphere that it can fit between two faces, and the, the diameter of that sphere is the thickness, okay? Yeah, which means it can't get into every little nook and cranny of the part, it's okay? Ray tracing calculation basically uses, uh, projects the normal vectors of every face and, sit and measures the distance uh, along uh, multiple points uh, on the face and sit, uh, to multiple points on the other face. Uh, ray tracing is uh, far more accurate into than rolling ball, however it does take a lot longer. You can dial back the settings so that it's not going to be as accurate, into, but in that case why not just use rolling ball. Like, there's no benefit in uh, basically rolling back the settings on ray tracing, making it less accurate into just to save time. Um, so we're going to do rolling ball and then uh, to get the results uh, under process results uh, there's a button called calculate thickness. You hit the little calculator button there, and it's going to run through its check, and it's going to give you a heat map. So this guy here it tells me roughly you know, what my thickness range is uh, of my part, and, to, and uh, I'm going to go under overall results. And so my average thickness, it says, is uh, 4.64 millimeters, and my maximum thickness uh, is uh, 5 millimeters. The thickness that I had set into when I did my shell on this part, I believe I did a shell on this, yes. When I did a shell, was 5 millimeters. So I'm expecting that nothing is greater than the 5 millimeters. Now, I see that my average is quite less than that. This is attributed to how I applied my draft angles in this part. So if I cancel out of this guy, this guy I did it as uh, using the draft feature or uh, doing the outside and inside. If I go to my draft best practice and say instead, which is where my edge blends are applied after the fact, after my draft has been applied, and I run that same tool, I am betting that into my average is going to be closer to the five millimeter mark. Wait for it to run. Okay, so slightly better. The other one was 4.64, the, the new guy is uh, 4.74. Uh, where some of the variation in this average is potentially gonna come down to is in my sharp corners. So because up here, right, I'm going to a 90 degree corner right, that the ball can't fit in, it, it's gonna see it, that as uh, my thickness being smaller. 
If I went ahead and applied an edge blend of two and a half mil along this top, because I know I have, I know my part is uh, because of how I made it, and that my thickness should be five millimeters. And so, so if I remove all of my sharp edges and round that over right, to a full to a full rad, I go back under my analysis. I should see that my wall thickness, my average, should be closer to five now. On this guy. Okay, so we're getting we're getting there. Right. It's not perfect. If I went with the ray trace option, it would be much better. Uh, basically, it just comes down to variations in the corner radiuses. Um, most of the time, what you're interested in, though, is what the uh, maximum thickness value is. When it comes to, say, sheet metal, uh, we have very specific part thicknesses that we have to deal with. But we don't want a part to be thicker than a certain value because then it means that we're going to be hitting harder with our press. And so we're going to increase the tonnage. So if the part is designed too thick, okay, then uh, it's not going to give us the results that we want. And to, in plastic components, uh, there is often a maximum allowable thickness that you guys want to, in your parts. This has to do with, thermo, like, uh, with the thermodynamics of the plastic that you are using yeah, and the molding process itself. If, uh, um, so this is a way that you can check it. So again, uh, all I wanted to, you guys to do is uh, calculate the wall thickness uh, uh, on this body that until you're applying the draft to, and take a screenshot until the heat map produced. So the heat map produced is going to be this lovely. Okay, it just went away now because I moved my yeah, mouse, but it's going to be that lovely yeah, image that's produced on screen. Okay. And again, take a screenshot of that, upload the finished part and the heat map uh, image uh, to the assignment Dropbox. So in the end, what you have is uh, one, you're gonna be uh, uploading two actual part files is it? and uh, two image files is it to, an, or, uh, to the uh, Dropbox. And so, so the extrude draft part and the advanced draft part you're gonna be uploading and then uh, images uh, from the shell draft and the advanced uh, draft URLs are going to be uploading. Yes? Is this running at the time when you draft and draft? Yes. Well, no, it's not. And, uh, I, don't care what the I don't care what the results are. Right. I'm, not, and, uh, I'm not looking for your result to be exactly this. So all I want to this assignment is just uh, you guys actually going through the motions, running it, and, to, and uh, taking a look at the results. It's not. And, uh, it's not looking at the accuracy of the results or anything like that. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's none of that. It is just strictly yeah, making sure that you know how to run the tool. That's why this one here is uh, just a basically a pass fail assignment. It's uh, this one's almost a gimme. Yeah, um, I'm giving you guys this one just because uh, you have the yeah, project that's due on the Tuesday. So I lighten the load a little bit, but I had to get this mark in. So. And it gives you a little bit more exposure to the different draft tools. Okay. So that is, oops. Uh.